Okay, this is part two of my inverted jewel thief project, and um, there was a suggestion on my comments about adding extra windings to the, uh, the secondary that runs the CFL, the high voltage winding here. So I did that today just to see what happened. I put another 200 wraps on this to go up to 650 wraps on the coil that fires off the CFL. Uh, I actually redid another uh, coil assembly that I had and unwound it all the way down to the very, very bottom and altered the uh, pickup coil and the primary to a uh, different ratio also. But it was uh, rather dramatic what happened. This will probably be my last uh, posting of this project um, for a while because today I got my ferrite ring. This is a toroid ferrite core and this is what works on these circuits and it's really the only thing that works on these circuits. I bought it on eBay, it was five bucks, uh, a little under ten bucks with shipping, but I'm going to be building a um, Slayer's circuit and uh, he has a Jewel Thief circuit that runs on um, AA batteries and it'll light up a CFL. Not very bright, but um, uh, maybe I can tweak it the way I've been tweaking this one over here and get the brightness I want out of it. But uh, yeah, that's my next project. I'm going to have to wind up this uh, toroid. But anyway, today I worked and worked and worked on this and uh, added a few things. I doubled up on the transistors. Yeah, they're not a, a uh, Darlington pair. They're just paralleled. And uh, it's mainly for heat. I've got a lot of heat going on here. And I also use these ballast resistors on the base because they were getting hot. But um, this was the big thing here. I can now light up a big fluorescent tube. And that's a, um, a 20, it says 20 watt um, tube, but it puts out a huge amount of light. And uh, better than actually what I showed last night on the video. And then uh, this will also fire off this 13 watt extremely bright. I was afraid I was going to burn it out or blow it up so I went back to the tube here but anyway this was very successful and uh, I've got big big back EMF coming off the collector now through this uh, high voltage diode and uh, I'm putting it into a capacitor and I cannot run the tube and charge a battery at the same time. It's one or the other at this point. I still haven't figured out a way to do both at the same time but the charging on this is, is phenomenal. Um, it reminds me of some of Slayer's early circuits, the pulse generator circuits. But let me turn this on. I'll show you. Um, I got a 12 volt source here, and um, it's a 12 volt um, battery source, and that down there is my amp draw. And uh, right now, nothing. Let me hook it up. Now, this right here is the voltage on the capacitor. Now I'm going to hook the capacitor up and watch this. This is this is absolutely phenomenal. Look at how fast that's going up. That's a, a 1200, uh, 1300 microfarad, 100 volt cap. I'm going to stop this right now and turn on the bulb. That's a 110 volt nightlight bulb. Put the load on this. And this is going to go back down a ways here. Sit there at about 58 volts. Now I'm drawing right now a little less than an amp on that thing. So it's pretty good load on it, but that is holding under load. 58 volts. I'm going to turn this off again, show you this go back up. It's just just amazing. Okay, now I'm going to show you the light now on the uh, CFL. It's actually not a CFL. The CFLs didn't work with this circuit. I couldn't figure that one out, but they didn't they they didn't work. Uh, I had to go to a different arrangement. I don't know why they didn't light up, but they wouldn't light up. I almost abandoned the whole thing, but notice the tube is out right now. I'm going to crank up the potentiometer here, and this is uh, a resistance on the base circuit to the transistor. It goes through, right through here, 
in through this and then back down to the base. Now these are where the ballast resistors are right here to keep from damaging the transistor. But um, okay, here we go. Watch this. Takes a while for everything to load up, but that is super bright. I'm going to turn this back down. Now I'm going to turn all the lights off again here in the house. I did this last night too. And that's lighting up the whole house right now. And like I say, that one light there uh, running off that circuit would be all you'd need to light up your home in an emergency. That one light. It really, really, uh, really does the job. Now that's drawn quite a bit. That's drawn down there about an amp and a quarter, and my voltage is about 12.3 on the thing. And uh, there's voltage on the cap. Now if I connect the cap again, I got to turn the um, potentiometer up here quite a ways. And I'll see if I can get the cap to come on again. Yeah. Now, turn this on. Okay, now that's holding 32, 32 volts. That light is on right now. And I've got that super bright fluorescent going. And I'm at about amp and a quarter, amp and a half. I can dial this down a little bit. Right there. But that's pretty phenomenal. That's um, making no noise. And like I say, it's lighting up the whole house here. You wouldn't have any problem at all um, using just the one light in your home for for this kind of a thing. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this whole scenario. It's um, If you want big light, this is the way to go. It's an inverter circuit using a modified Jewel Thief circuit. And uh, I showed this last night. And like I say, this will probably be the last time I show this because I'm going to be moving over here working with the uh, the uh, Slayer Jewel Thief circuit. But anyway, this was very successful. Um, very, very, very successful. But it took all day to get it to work. That's it.